guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I am here today with a ship with me. These are all orders that came in over the weekend. We have some really cool pieces. One in particular I cannot wait to show you and I'm also very sad that it's leaving. You know, I'm gonna be in mourning about this one for a little bit, but I hope you all had a fabulous weekend. I'm just back in. I was back in Utah visiting some friends this weekend, meeting my friends sweet little baby, so I hope your weekend was just as wonderful. But before we get started here, guys, if you are new, first and foremost, welcome. I am Julia, uh, that's my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and reselling on the internet here. If that sounds like something that you are into, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. We're building this great community and we have a lot of fun here. But without further ado, guys, um, surprising to nobody, I'm running late. It's already afternoon. I should have done this two hours ago. Things just got a little crazy this morning, so we are running late. We've gotta get this stuff packed up and over to the post office. So go grab yourself a snack, go grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get in to the orders. So first up here, and this is, I'm, like, I feel like I'm just starting these all with stark reminders of the fact that it is spring, it is summer, people are shopping for spring and summer, so let's get those things listed. This is a pair of uh, bikini bottoms from Malai, M-A-L-A-I. Um, I had never heard of it, but the quality was really nice. And when I picked this up, there was actually two pieces and I thought it was a top and a bottom and um, alas, it was not, it was two bottoms. And they're brand new, you know, they still have like the hygienic liner in there. Um, I believe this was sold at Anthropology. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you are familiar with Malai. Um, but again, like the, the quality is really nice and that's why I picked it up. I believe these are also reversible. I think you can wear this in two ways. You know, I'm just gonna like roll this. Like, there we go. But yeah, so I grabbed them. You know, they were at the bins where I paid a dollar for them. And again, like I didn't realize that they were two bottoms until I got them home. And I sold the other pair literally in January, if memory serves me right. I sold them in like the dead of January. And you know, just I, the thing that worked about this, you know, now obviously I was disappointed that it wasn't a full set when it got home because this is a pretty pricey brand. The thing that I didn't mind about it is that they were like kind of like a leopard print. I think the pattern was called Sand Ocelot. And that's just like, it's a neutral, right? So it's a pattern that can be paired with many different, different kinds of tops. You can pair it with a, like a red top or a black top or whatever, like it all works. So I didn't think that these were gonna be tough to sell, but I'm glad this one is on its way. So I had these for about five months. I, I also picked these up like right at the end of summer. So excellent decision-making, Julia. So I had this listed again for five months at $18 and I got an offer for $13, which I did accept. I got these for a dollar at the bins and that brought my profit to $9 even. So, you know, when you're dealing with like a single, you know, piece of a bathing suit. I try to be cognizant about the fact that I may or may not get like another offer for a while and I wanted to move these on. Next up here is this pretty gauze top from Joie, J-O-I-E. Now, I've, I've had a lot of comments from people saying that Joie has really slowed down for them and it has slowed down for me as well. That also doesn't mean that it's a bad buy, right? So depending on what you can source this for. So if you are paying eight, nine dollars for a shirt, this is probably a, not the bet that I would make right now. You know, especially if it's something that's got a little bit more of that like early 2000s twee feel to it. Like they make some really beautiful boho, boho blouses that I sell very, very well. But something like this is a real classic. Now I was able to source this from the bins for a dollar so it's not a bad investment for me. Like I, you know, I'm not gonna be making $50 that I would have been making a couple of years back on Joie because Joie is expensive. Like they retail for like, I wanna say that they retail for like $250. They are not cheap and the quality is beautiful, but you know, a couple of years back, you would have made $50 on this, no problem. So this was an easy like brand that you could just pay up for and not even think twice about. But today, you know, you can expect somewhere in like the $25 to $35 range for most of their shirts, which again, for my profit structure, it works, but obviously that needs to be looked at with what you are sourcing for and what your, you know, target profit is. 
uh, you know, some people don't ever want to get something, you know, where they're making less than $30 profit and like props to you. This probably won't work for you, but for me, I think this works great. And that's a beautiful little like perfect summer basic, light as a feather, a little sleeveless top. So I had this for about two months and I had it listed for $33 and I got an offer for $26, which I did accept with a $1 cost from the bins. Uh, this brought my profit to $20.94. Super happy about that. Great little shirt and I hope she loves it. Now, next up, now this is a piece I absolutely love. And to be clear, if this was in my size, this would not be leaving. This is a little top from Zara and I love this kind of like double knit, green pattern this feels very like palm springs cocktails by the golf course in 1976 right like it has that vibe for me which i love like i love that kind of retro feel to it it's got a little bit of a little bit of that like androgynous feel i just love it and i'll tell you i got so much interest on this this is one of those ones that i had yeah, I, I cross list most of my things on Poshmark and Depop and eBay and Mercari. And every once in a blue moon, I have something that really, I, and I do use Vendu, like in case you want to know what I use to cross list. It does cost money, but it saves me a boatload of time in terms of managing my work and in terms of managing my inventory. And I know that Posh Sidekick, I've talked about, I talked about Posh Sidekick, I think, I think it was in my last ship with me. And they're wonderful and they do have a new cross posting function. So um, if anybody uses that, let me know. I'm just, I'm very intimidated about moving all of my inventory over. I've got many hundreds of pieces and I think it might be a ton of work <laughs> that I don't have the time to do right now, but it is probably something that I will do in the future because it would be nice to consolidate. I do love my Posh Sidekick. It, it is a, uh, my Sidekick is basically a virtual assistant that shares all of my listings for me multiple times a day. It shares my listings to parties. It also creates orders to likers on Poshmark through which like 50% or more of my orders go through. So anyway. Aside, aside, people ask me what I use all the time for that kind of stuff, so I just wanna let you know. So this one was just a great one, and this is one of those ones that I had listed on Depop through all my cross-listing. On Depop, this had so many likes. It's one of those things that kind of bothers me about Depop. They have all those offers, um, and they're non-binding, which, like, I get it. You know, from a consumer standpoint, I get having a non-binding offer option is great, but as, as um, sellers it's kind of a bummer you know and I had I, I want to say I probably had I had this listed for about two and a half months which actually took a lot longer to sell than I thought it would but I want to say that I had over a hundred offers on this on Depop and none of them went through so I don't know if there's something that like maybe this just got extra signal boost and it just was in front of a lot more people I don't know but either way nobody bought it on Depop somebody did buy it on Poshmark so I had this listed for two and a half months at $34 and I got an offer for 25 and I was like ready to move it on with one dollar cost from the bins this brought my profit to $19 so super happy to get this moved along despite the fact that I absolutely love this shirt and it is something that I have been on the market for something like that in my size. So next up here, now I have sold a million of these. I will sell a million more. I will pick them up every time I see them. This is a little burnout velvet kimono with a fringe trim. Um, these just sell so, so well for me. And I think it's, I sell them a little bit better in the fall and in the winter, but I will sell kimonos all year long. Now, this one is unbranded. Of course, I'm always in the market for a Johnny Was piece. That's like kind of the, the goal. Those will go, if you can find one that's Johnny Was or one of Johnny Was's like sub brands for Love and Liberty or whatnot, you're looking at $100 pretty quick without batting an eye. But even the unbranded ones, if you were able to source them for like a good price, I mean, I, I got this at the bins, you will you will make your money back pretty quickly. And I do find that a lot of people bundle with them because they're just great topper pieces. But either way, definitely if, if you find one while you are out on your hunt and it is like a reasonable price, pick it up because it will sell, it's a guaranteed mover. And I know we're all out there for those big $100 sellers, but there's something to be said about something that you can pick up and know that it will move, you know, quickly within a week or, you know, within a couple weeks. So this one I had listed for $26. Again, this was unbranded. There was no brand at all in here. 
and my sidekick sent an offer for $21, which was accepted. That brought my profit with a $1 cost from the bins. That brought my profit to $14.78. I just love burnout kimonos. Are any of you burnout kimono wearers? Let me know. Let me know the best one you've ever found. Have you ever found a Johnny Was one? Let me know. Like, let me know if you found one, what you paid for it, and what you sold it for. I look at them all the time. I've never found one in the thrift. I've never found one in the bins. I love them. I've seen them like in store and they're stunning. Oh, that silk velvet. All right, next up here. This is a cute little midi dress from Zara. This is like a ditzy floral. You wanna make sure you're taking note of that term. This is very much like when you're looking at like 90s vintage dresses and you see this kind of like tiny floral print it's referred to in textiles as either a Liberty floral or a Ditsy floral. Now Liberty floral is like a brand name. So that's kind of who like initiated this style of floral. And they tend to be very distinctive. Like if you Google, if you throw Liberty floral into Google, you will, you will find examples of it. And their textiles are really beautiful. Liberty also does some collabs. I think they've done collabs with like J. Crew and a couple other brands and they're sought after. So if you see the, the word Liberty X, any other brand, or if you find a dress that is Liberty branded, definitely pick it up because it's kind of in that like Laura Ashley world, right? So it's like a high end kind of floral print. But anyway, Ditsy Floral, if you ever get a piece like this with these tiny little floral prints, make sure to use that because people search for that term. Anyway, I found a bunch of these kind of floral Zara dresses with like back to back to back within a couple weeks of each other. I wanna say I found like 10 or 15, like it was quite a bit. And this one had probably the least interest out of all of them. It had kind of a higher square neck. It had a little bit more modest like shoulder line. The length was a definitive, like almost like a T length. It was a little bit longer than a, than a traditional midi. So I'm kind of not surprised but I had this for about two and a half months. Like I've had the others. I'm pretty sure every other one that I bought has already sold. And I had this listed for $32. So it had been sitting for a little bit of time and I was kind of ready to move it on. And I got an offer for $20, so I did accept that. Again, I had it for two and a half months with the dollar cost of the bins that brought my profit to $14.03. So I was super happy to get this moving again i'm still going to continue to pick up zara dresses because they do very very well for me this was just one that kind of flopped a little bit. i mean like a 20 dollars profit on a one dollar investment is great but a lot of the other ones that i had picked up sold like within days for like 35 40 one even went for 45 and i believe one went over 50 dollars. so you know just in the in the kind of microcosm of the Zara picks that I've done recently. This one didn't do quite as well, but it still is a great profit. Next up, now this was something that I found last summer and I found two of these like right next to each other in the bins. And these are from Barefoot Dreams. And I didn't know before I picked these up that Barefoot Dreams did a, a Terry fabric, but this is, uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to read this, but that says Barefoot Dreams Beach, kind of similar to how Free People does Free People Beach. And the name of the fabric is Cozy Terry. So you know that they're like main, they're the fabric that they're known for is called Cozy Chic Light. But this is just like a caftan, like a kind of, it's heavier weight. Like this weighs quite a bit and it's got pockets, but it is a true caftan shape with a little bit of an elastic scrunch in the back to kind of give it a little bit of shape, like to nip it in at the waist a little bit. So this is, you know, prim primarily I'm assuming used meant to be used as a swim cover-up, which makes sense. Terry Cloth, Barefoot Dreams Beach, here we are. So I found this one, which is gray, and then the other one I found was navy blue. And the navy blue one sold in like two days. <laughs> like it sold so quick. And then this one kind of sat throughout the winter, and maybe it was just timing, because I want to say that what did I have? I had this for four months, so that's, yeah, I found this in like December, and that navy blue one sold in like two days. And I wanna say the navy blue one sold for like 65 or $70, like it sold really quick. I've dropped the price on this one a few times. So I had this one listed at 55. Again, I, I dropped the price quite a bit. 
And I'm sure that the price on this will start to go back up now that we are in, you know, kind of vacation time. But I did get an offer on this for $40, which I gladly accepted. Again, I had this for four months and it is pretty bulky and pretty heavy. So it is something that I was kind of keen to get moving out of my closet. Of course, if I find another one, I will still buy it. $40 is a fabulous price. I did get this at the bins for $1 and that brought my profit to $30.22. So definitely something to be on the lookout for. I This was the only time I ever found anything Barefoot Dreams Terry. I haven't found anything before that. I haven't found anything since, but uh, let me know if you found it and you've done well with it because um, I was pretty, I was pretty pumped to find those and right next to each other, no less. Now, next up, this was something I was very much considering to keep for myself. This is a vintage Izod, or I'm sorry, a vintage Lacoste cardigan sweater. Just the color does nothing for me, <laughs> so I didn't keep it. It's a men's 2XL. I want to say that this is vintage from the 80s. It's definitely got a little bit of wear to the cuffs, but I think that kind of like lends to the look of it a little bit. This feels very like grunge. It feels very like eclectic grandpa, which is one of those kind of core styles that people are searching for. Definitely something to keep on your mind as you are uh, listing. If you have anything like this, if it looks like something that an eclectic grandpa would wear, use that keyword because people are searching for it. You know, oversized cardigans like this. Those kind of like that that Zara shirt that I just sold, that, uh, that green and white Zara polo. That's very much an eclectic grandpa style. So definitely use those keywords to your advantage um, because people do search those out, especially, especially if you do any selling on Depop. Any of those kind of core styles. Now they have like a drop down where you can choose, you know, the style and they have like cottage core and fairy and Y2K and etc. They don't have everything. They don't update that list all that often. So make sure you're using them as keywords in your listing. Just, you know, just so they get picked up when somebody puts those words in the search in the search bar. So I had this listed for 32 and I had it listed for about, I don't know, I think I had this listed for about three or four weeks. Yeah, three or four weeks. Cause it took me a little bit of time to like figure out if I wanted to keep it for myself or not. And I got an offer for $25, which I did accept $1 cost of the bins. And that brought me to $19 and 21 cents. And I am currently on the hunt for myself cause I loved the style and I loved the like oversized fit of this. I'm now currently looking for that sweater in a Kelly green for me. So if anybody has it, I'll put the link down below. I think that was a 2XL from the 80s, from the 90s. If you have one in green, let me know because I'll probably be buying it. So next up, we've got a bunch of bottoms that sold this past weekend and some killer ones. First up, no more killer than this. These are from The Row. I just found these. They were in, I think, last week's haul, two weeks ago haul. I'll, I'll link the haul down below. But these are beautiful, like crop leg, slightly flared. These are kind of like ankle length. They're not like cropped. So I knew that they would go pretty quick because this is a pretty hot length right now. And it's, of course, The Row. I, these are $1,000 pants. They're beautiful. I love, I love showing these to people who have like, you know, never really touched anything that's like true, like ultra luxury like this. And I love kind of just going to them and being like, do you wanna, do you wanna feel what a thousand dollar pair of pants feels like? Because really like, it's beautiful. Like this fabric is, to be sure, if this was in my size, these would not be leaving my house. So again, these, these were worth probably, I think that these sold for about 900 or a thousand dollars. And uh, you know, if you can afford $900 or $1,000 on pants, like power to you, <laughs> power to you. It is not in my purview. I don't think it'll ever be in my purview, especially because I thrift and I know I can get them um, <laughs> much, much cheaper. I can get them on the secondhand market. So I had these listed for $89. And you know, I might've been a little low on that. I was looking at sold comps and the sold comps on their pants range anywhere from like $20 and I'm assuming something $20 is coming through like a posh show all the way up to like 300. So, I, you know, again, I, I got these at the bins for a dollar. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to sit on these and wait for like that top dollar. That's not how my business works. 
So I had them listed for $89, and within two days I had an offer for $75, which I did accept. Oh, these pants are fabulous. Dollar cost of the bins, which... Oh, I will never stop nerding out about that. But that brought my profit to $65.21. I am pleased as punch about that, and I hope she absolutely loves these because these pants are made like a dream. Next up, oh, this is such a cool find. I've had this for a little while, and it's funny, when I picked this up, there's a girl that I'm friendly with in my bins, and I kind of picked this up, and I mean, I want you to get a good look at that. Like, it's interesting, right? Like, this is an interesting skirt. And I felt it, and the first thought on my mind was like, this is, like, nice. Like, there's a lot of workmanship on this skirt, and the other girl, she was kind of across the bin from me and she looks at me, she's like, that looks like somebody's, you know, fashion school project. And I look at her and I say like, no, 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 this is something special. So the brand, the designer on this, and I'm just gonna put some tissue paper over this to kind of try to keep these jewels in place as I fold this. And I look at her, I'm like, no way. I'm like, this is something special. This is something like high end. Hold this here. And turns out the designer on this, his name is Matthew Williamson. Okay. I think that's good. And he was a big designer out of the UK in the early 2000s. And I mean like this reeks of early 2000s, like Paris Hilton, it's low rise, it's like mermaid colors, it's bling all over the place. And I found a couple other things. I never found this skirt. I, for all I know, this could be like a one of a kind skirt. This could have been a runway piece for all I know. Again, there's a lot of work in it. Like it's, it's beautifully done. You know, the, the thing that I found similarly, it sold for like $1,400 or was on sale back in the early 2000s for about $1,400. So Matthew Williamson is a high-end British designer. I've never seen another piece from him, never before or never since, uh, but definitely a brand, uh, definitely a designer to be on the lookout for. If, if any of you have ever found another Matthew Williamson piece, let me know. I don't know how common he is. I would say he, it's a bolo, but I just don't know how often you're gonna find one. I find my, I, you know, I consider myself pretty lucky to have found this and those row pants, like, of course, immediate buy if you see either of those designers. So let me know if you've seen something like this while you were out and about. So anyway, I had this listed for $75 and I did have it listed for six months. I, I knew that this was going to be one of those pieces that took a while to sell. It is not only, it's a pretty small size, but it is also like a very specific person who's going to be buying this. So I had it listed for $75 for six months and I got an offer for $50, which I did accept. And with $1 cost from the bins, this brought my profit to $37.79. Such a fun skirt. I literally had this listed in my inventory as like the mermaid skirt, because it is, it is just so bling. It is so early 2000s, and I hope that buyer loves it. So next up here, we've got this pair of Eddie Bauer ripstop pants. Now, I've had these for a while, and I wanna say I got these at one of my bins locations that's pay by the pound. And if memory serves me right, it was kind of the more expensive location that's a pay by the pound. But Eddie Bauer is one of those companies, like Eddie Bauer's been around forever. They make really like excellent quality outdoor wear, but they don't resell for that much. So, you know, it's something that if you can source for a reasonable price, like by all means grab it, Eddie Bauer will sell, like there are people that seek it out. You know, certainly people know it, but if you are planning on any kind of hiking or some kind of trip where you're gonna be doing some serious hiking and you want some like technical clothing, technical clothing, I mean, you're not gonna be buying like mountaineering gear, but you know, you don't wanna pay the Patagonia price. You don't wanna pay the, the North Face or the Fjall Raven, whatever it is. Check out Eddie Bauer. Like Eddie Bauer, makes really good quality stuff. Like, and I'm, when I say like, they make really great quality stuff, like I would not hesitate to sell, tell somebody to go and buy Eddie Bauer's stuff for like an expedition, like a mountaineering expedition. 
you know, especially if it's not something that they're gonna do over and over and over and over again, you know, like don't spend that kind of money. Like if you're, if you're gonna only be doing it once in your life, like get something like Eddie Bauer where you can get a really inexpensive on the secondhand market and have every shred of that quality. So I had this for six or seven months and I had it listed for $28. I cannot read my own handwriting. $28 and my sidekick sent an offer for $25, which was accepted. This one had a cost of $2.99 from the pay by the pound bins and that brought my profit to $15.48. These were a great pair of pants. And I hope they go on some adventures with the buyer. Now next up is something that I know a lot of people do really well with and I've never really picked them up before I grabbed these. And this is a pair of figs. Now, I don't know figs that well. Of course, I do not work in an environment where I need to wear scrubs. So I wasn't sure when I first picked this up. And I'll tell you, I had a heck of a time trying to figure it out. <laughs> I wasn't sure if these were men's or women's. And that's a problem, <laughs> you know? So I did a lot of research and it turns out these are men's. And I guess the men's sell a little bit less well because they have less like color availability. I don't think that figs sell like they used to. I know a lot of people used to do very well with them, but I think it was a lot of like a limited color drop that like sold out. I think that's kind of where that landed. If any of you were kind of involved in that or you did a lot of figs in your sales, like let us know, like let, let us know kind of what it was that was so red hot about them and how you're doing with them now. This was my first foray into figs and I don't know if it's gonna be something, I don't know if it's really for me, because I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not in the medical field. I don't know many people in the medical field, so I don't really have anybody that I can like ask about this. So it's maybe not for me, but you know, I'm glad I gave it a try and I'm glad I learned something. So these I had for, I had listed for a month, but I've had these for probably four months just one of those things that I wasn't super excited about listing and I knew I had to do some research and learn about it and I just wasn't really enthused, which is all the more reason for them not to be something that I pick up. You know, like you should really be picking up what like beats your heart because you can usually speak a lot more passionately about it. But so I have these listed for a month, despite the fact that they've been sitting in my house for quite a bit longer and I have them listed for $26 and I got an offer for $18 which I did accept with a $1 cost of the bins that brought my profit to $15.92. I hope they go to good use. People in the medical profession are actual angels. And finally this piece that I'm sure you have all been staring at and <laughs> I don't want it to go. I love this piece so much. So this is vintage from the 60s in nearly perfect condition. There's like a little spot of discoloration on the back, but it's like a little bit of yellowing against this and you can really not tell like in the light that I'm sitting in right now, like I know where it is and I can, it, kind of, it just looks a little bit like a shadow. Anyway, this is otherwise in perfect condition. And this was the dress that I was willing to go to Lana Del Rey. And it didn't, it's not going to her, but it's going to somebody who really loves it. So I'm happy. I'm so sad. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I go into mourning when I, when I sell these pieces because I just love them so much. So, I, I mean, I, I love this thing so much that I had it on my mannequin <laughs> for like two weeks, just sitting in my office so I could stare at it. I have no shame. I, I got into reselling because of vintage. It is still where my heart lies and every great vintage piece that I find, I will still pick up. And I, I just, I love selling them. I love getting pieces like this a new life. Like that just makes my heart so happy. So this again is like, I am pretty sure that this is silk brocade. I'm also pretty sure that this was handmade. I'm trying to figure out how to fold this as to not like crush these beautiful jeweled pieces. And um, so again, this was handmade. There was no, uh, no designer label in it. And just by feel, I'm pretty sure that that is silk brocade. And something like this, you know, you don't know if this is gonna go to be like somebody's showstopper at a gala or if it's gonna be on stage somewhere. Like something about that when I'm selling vintage just really lights me up. Like I, you know, my mom and I have been selling 
vintage housewares for over a decade at this point. And we have sold to so many interesting places, movie studios, we've sold to celebrities, we've sold to like world leaders, literally. And it's just kind of cool that we're finding these kind of treasures in places. This, I literally, I got this at the bins, just spoilers. I got this at the bins and it was in a bin that was about to get taken back out. Like literally, like as I was pulling this out of the bin, they were starting to yell like, for the table change. So God only knows where this would have been. <laughs> this would have been in a landfill somewhere. So I'm just so excited that I get to be, you know, the kind of part of the chain of custody of this, of this dress. And I get to, you know, shepherd this. I get to be, I get to be a good custodian getting it from the original owner who obviously loved it because this is well preserved to the next owner who will hopefully also love it and then hopefully when they're done with it they'll sell it to somebody else who loves it and it doesn't end up back in the bins and these these treasures can just keep living their beautiful lives so i just like it makes my heart so happy so i had this listed for 139 dollars for about two months it's a vintage piece vintage pieces are always you know number one they're typically a little bit smaller they're kind of precise measurements because these were usually made to order and you know there it's of course a limited buyer pool like not everybody is into vintage dresses and so two months was actually a very quick sale for this i have some that have been sitting for two years so just to give you that you know kind of idea if vintage is something you were thinking about getting into just something to be realistic about so i had it for 139 dollars for two months i got an offer for 115 which i gladly accept i went back and forth with the girl a couple times and i'm super excited for her to get it and i got this for a, a dollar at the bins and that brought my profit to $91.20 and I will miss her. I will miss her, but she is going on to bigger and better things and hopefully a little bit of wear time. But that is it guys. That is the shipment for today. Thank you so much for hanging with me while I get my work done. It is so nice to be able to like have somebody to talk to and nerd out about these things that really just clearly make me very excited. <laughs> I start to talk about my vintage dresses to some of my friends and I mean you just see the eyes glaze over it's like they just they just don't care so thank you for being somebody for me to talk to and nerd out about these things and to nerd about them with me like nothing makes me happier when I see your comments loving the same like loving these things the way that I love them but you know today guys this was an ASP of over $37 which makes me so happy so I aim to get my sale price $30 or up. So anytime I can beat that by a pretty good amount, I'm very happy. But I've gotta get these things packed up in my car and over to the post office ASAP. I've got 87,000 other things to do this afternoon. But if you guys had fun, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. They both really help me out with YouTube. But guys, without further ado, thank you again for hanging with me. Have the most amazing week. Happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.